suddenly you've spent like a thousand dollars on language arts. <laughs> like, it's like, oh right. God. Yes, exactly. Um, Not to mention like, this is going to equate to 10 hours of schooling a day. <laughs> Hi everybody. Welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 13, 10, and eight almost nine in two weeks. So that's why I pause. I have started to do a series on veteran homeschoolers because I think there's a lot of value to be gained from moms who've been in this game for a while. Um, I've tried to choose moms who have different backgrounds, different styles, because there's no one right way to homeschool. And today I have on one of my very best friends, Amy from Renegade Homeschool. And we're just going to have an informal conversation going through different things about like how we homeschool, why we homeschool, what are some of our best tips and tricks, what are some of our worst mistakes, yada, yada, yada. So I will let Amy introduce herself now. Hello, I am Amy, uh, again, over at Renegade Homeschool. I am a Houston, Texas homeschooler and uh, been homeschooling for about five years six years now, somewhere in there. Um, and I have a ninth grader this year and a fourth grader, and it has been an interesting ride the whole way. So I'm happy to be here and happy to share any glimmers of wisdom that I might have. <laughs> what led you to start homeschooling? You know, it, I feel like in kindergarten, first grade and public school, they kind of cover the basics, but then they kind of really start ramping up all the things right around the second and third grade mark. And so unfortunately, when we moved, we were at one school and then they built the school that we were being redistricted to. And so it was a lot of transition during that time frame for my oldest. Unfortunately, her first, her second grade experience was not the greatest. Like they literally didn't even have a teacher the first week of school. And so it was like, substitutes and a, a lot of just craziness that first year for her, um, at that school. Um, and then she transitioned to a new school and just really, really, really struggled. And we tried everything within the system and outside the system to help her. And unfortunately nothing was really working for her. Like it just was like, you know, we're at school, we're doing homework, we're tutoring multiple times a week. And like, literally she was miserable. Like she came home from one day. I remember very specifically because I, I, I'm an accountant. I actually worked a job from home and I met her at the front door and it was like the light in her eyes had gone out and it scared me right then and there told my husband like, Hey, we need to, we need to have a family meeting because this, this is just not good. And so we just said, you know what, let's just give this whole homeschool thing a try. If it doesn't work out, we can always put her right back in. That's kind of what spurred us to really just try homeschooling and see if it would be a way to meet her needs and meet her where she was at versus our, you know, everything else that we were trying that was literally just driving her crazy. So, and at the same time, my youngest was in preschool and he was having struggles of his own, um, and it just was like, you know what? Everybody's just going to get homeschooled. So we jumped right in um, and started from there. And it was, it was like in the middle of fourth grade is when I pulled her out and we haven't looked back. <laughs> it's so interesting with the things that lead us to homeschooling. Like, I feel like so many of us have this moment of clarity where whatever we're trying to do to make the school situation we have work just yeah. isn't working. And we know, like we've done the things. And yes. Like our kid just isn't the same human. You know, yeah. Even at that point, I think a lot of us don't think it's going to be forever. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, we're just going to figure out whatever part of you is not working in school and like try to like smooth that out somehow. Exactly. Yeah. We're just going to iron out the wrinkles and then you're yeah. going to go back for middle school. Right. Like that was kind of my thought we're process back into the square hole somehow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're going to figure this out. Um, I had like an inkling that maybe I wanted to homeschool when she was in preschool herself. I don't even know, like I had come across a homeschooler and this is back like when IG first started, like in 2012 or 11 or whatever, stumbled across a Colorado homeschooler of all, all things. And I was intrigued, you know, I was like, oh, this is really cool. And like, she was very organized, like doing all the things. And she had older and younger kids. And I was like, hmm, maybe this is something I could do. I even purchased like preschool curriculum for her. And I tried it with Audrey on the days that she was home. Cause you know, it was like a church preschool where they go like two days a week or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, I talked to other people 
like neighbors and stuff. And then I was like, uh, they kind of taught me out of it. I was like, yeah, maybe that is a crazy idea. Like trying to teach reading. What are you thinking? You're not an educator. And so I was like, screw that. She's going to public school. There's parts of me that are like, I should have just started that. Like, uh, if, you know, of course, hindsight's 2020, <laughs> but I just think it's funny that it, I did have like the thought, mm-hmm. you know, a while back. And then we ended up here anyway, you know, I think it's when we have like a desire to do it or like a, a temp, like a, like a temperament suited for it. You know, there's yeah. a lot of pieces that go into it, right? It's not just like wanting your kids at home or wanting that whole like homestead right. experience. It's like some people literally see colored folders and they're like colored folders, you know, like <laughs> something about like yes. the organization. I think all of that matters. Like I always think people who go to homeschooling who don't take themselves into, con- into account like as people, like as human beings, like the right. adult human, like that's a problem. And I think it's totally fine to make homeschool work for both of you. Did you immediately start with like school at home style or did you do like, did you know like that you had a, you know, a Charlotte Mason leaning or a Waldorfy thing or whatever? I didn't really know any of those terms because like I said, it was, it was more of an unexpected homeschooling experience at that point. And I just was like, I, here's the areas I know I'm struggling in. A Google search led me to like all about reading and, you know, like some of these programs that are still amazing today. And I'm so glad that we did them. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know like who I was as a homeschooler. Eventually, like I ran into those little quizzes and those buzzwords that I was like, oh, what's that? And I was like, okay, maybe I do kind of tend, you know, to go towards those, but I would still, even to this day, argue that I'm incredibly eclectic because I stick with not, I can't stick with one thing. Like I just, I'm like, I love literature-based learning. So that is very much a part of the way that we homeschool. Um, But other than that, I I can't say that I ascribe to (laughs) any particular educational philosophy. I really loved the idea of Charlotte Mason when I first ran into everybody's like flat mm-hmm. lace. Yeah. It is the most beautiful thing I've ever it seen. It is. Yeah. Like, maybe I too could be a gentle, wonderful spirit with like willow baskets everywhere. Right. Like, right. I, I, I desire to be that, but I am certainly not that person. Yeah. When you first start and you see all of the beautiful stuff, whether it's Waldorf and the peg dolls and the felting. Oh gosh. And- yes. Those two. <laughs> yeah. Or, or it's, you know, Charlotte Mason or it's, the people who do traditional school at home, like with an exceptional right. degree of organization, you know, hold back. I always say to people, like the best thing I could tell you to buy is like a spiral bound notebook where you write down all the things you like. These are Charlotte Mason things I like. And this is like a bundle I saw that was cool. And don't buy any of it. Like literally exactly. just write it down, feel your feelings. And then when you get to the point of actually buying your stuff for the next year and you're right. like one slot for like this, like not right. five. Like you have one, <laughs> like pick the one thing that you like yeah. best. I definitely did not account for time when I started. Like I was like, Same. I do every single thing. So when you're eclectic, that's a real danger, right? You're like, it oh, totally I'll is. Piece it through together. And then suddenly you've spent like a thousand dollars on language arts. <laughs> and like, it's like oh, Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, not to mention like, this is going to equate to 10 hours of schooling a day. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It, That's so why you, I think people should forward plan at least like a week. Yes, like, I agree. Just write it out just to see like how much time is there? Because when you really like mark it out on a piece of paper with like, you know, post-its or whatever, you're like, oh, the day is over. Apparently I couldn't do like current events and like a, like a unit study on marine biology and all of this with everything else. Yeah. And I certainly tried to pack it all in at the very beginning, because again, you just have no concept of what this really is going to look like until you execute it, you know? And I think that is the the most challenging part to starting homeschool is like, just start, right? Like you may have this wild, beautiful plan for your homeschool, but you just got to just do it and see if that's even going to work. Right. Because certainly the wheels fell off multiple times, <laughs> especially in that first year of homeschooling. And, you know, you had asked, did we D school, did we do school at home, you know, kind of, and for my kids, because we have neurodivergency, we have executive functioning stuff going on, we have sensory processing things. It made the most sense just to literally go from one right into a similar format of like, Hey, we're going to get up and we're going to do school. And we're going to, you know, de-schooling would have just thrown us off the rails. Like, I don't even know that we would have started homeschooling if we de-schooled because it would have just been like this massive battle every day to like get started on school. So it's like, 
ended school on Friday, literally started on a Monday and we just went with it. You know, like I said, not to say that it was like this beautiful, lovely every single day. It was like a shit show for literally at least a good three months. (laughs) That's something people don't talk about enough are like the shit show days, like for real. They are no joke. I mean, you will see a side of yourself that you did not know existed, like as a parent, because I agree. I think the stress of suddenly taking it on yourself, like their education. Yep. Nobody else gets it. Like not your spouse. No one gets that. You know, the, all the blame is going to fall on you, right? Like exactly. It just doesn't go your experimental year or whatever. Let's say nobody learns anything. Let's say, <laughs> I mean, right. all that is riding on you. And some people say like, oh, don't let that affect you and blah, blah, blah. I think there's a place for it. Because mm-hmm, I agree. The fact is it does write on you. When when it's time for an evaluation, like you're the one that hands in the binder and like your samples, right? Like here's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and there it- is a real amount of real world pressure saying, I need to see these things from you, especially if you live in a state that regulates homeschool. Yeah. Like that's why when people look at curricula and stuff and pick it just based on like someone's post that they like or someone's whatever, I'm like, don't do that. Yeah. Well, one, a lot of curricula will offer free samples. Like exactly kind of de-schooling like for a couple of weeks, use it for that experimentation time. Like I agree. Print out like three different ones that you're interested in and like just see, like see what your kid thinks because they all have different flavors. And guess what? You're gonna have like 36 weeks of that flavor. So if your kid doesn't <laughs> like you know, vanilla or chocolate or whatever, it doesn't mean any one of those curricula are bad. Yes. Just, your kid is not gonna do it. And when you exactly. schedule I'm for homeschool or to schedule in the 15 minutes. You will have to like talk to your child about why they're not Battle. doing whatever they're doing, whatever they're supposed to be doing. You know, yeah. my son get mad at me for having math like on the agenda, you know, exactly like, real resistance. Like I think also moving into a homeschool space, especially if you're coming from traditional schooling, right? Like if you're exiting one and entering another, Um, you know, there are these expectations that your children might even have. And I think it's, you know, really important to have conversations with them about like what this might look like. Right. Because I think a lot of times when we pull them from the public school system or even a private school, like they think homeschool, I'm going to get to play video games all day. Like I'm not going to do much, you know, like that's their concept of homeschool because they know home is like the safe space for them to come and like relax. And so, and not to say that that's still, those things don't happen, but it's like, okay, but yes, there's still an expectation that we're going to do all these things that you were still doing that when you were in the public school or private school space, um, it's just going to get done faster because we don't have a, we're not transitioning classes. We don't have a bunch of people in class, you know, so it's easier to move through your stuff, but you still have all the same subjects and you're still probably going to have the same struggles that you had. Cause I was just talking to, uh, somebody who just started homeschooling their child, who's older elementary and is getting a lot of pushback on things like writing and math, which are typical. I'm like, that is so normal for them to push back on you on those things. Like you just have to hold your boundaries. I said, and it's okay to say, you know what, if you can write three sentences, right. And, and get that done today. Fine. That's enough day. or do this number of math problems. Like you can make it work for them. Like, but telling them like, they're just not going to do it or or giving into that is obviously not, you know, the best approach of trying to get your kid, you know, on a routine of doing the same things. Right. Like, I think one of the things that I hear a lot from people who are a little bit I mean, a lot of people are a little are more easygoing than me, but but who are more easygoing than me is like, oh, we just didn't do math, like you know, for seven months, or we didn't do math that year. And I personally don't think that that's the way to go because, I agree, everybody can do some math. Like it might not be the math you originally planned. Yes. It might not be grade level. It might not be whatever. It might just be multiplication facts. Exactly. But you have to like keep that going like progress is I think the name of the game maybe steps are still progress yeah and you can work around all of that however you want like I remember for my son you sure can moving like math had to be on the stairs like he would get back right he could come like down or up you know but like he'd have to get back to me sure it's like a game yeah Yeah. figure it out some kids don't like that some kids just want worksheets like one and done they just want to like get it over with I think that can be hard for people too they see all the fun stuff with homeschooling and they have a kid who's just like, give me a worksheet. 
want school at home. <laughs> like I just, that's my middle child. She's like, let me have it. Her favorite year was when we did like the weekly folders and she just had like the majority of her like written work was right, right there for her. And she would like literally yeah. through the week and be done by like Wednesday, you know, like, like and, you know, and that's really some real life experience, right? Like, I mean, if you get a job, especially if it's a project-based job, you know what you have to get done in the amount of time that you have to do it. And then you figure that out, right? Like it's a good time management skill and, and knowing like, oh, well, if I get all of this done, then I can go play Roblox or I can go to my friend's house or I can go swimming or whatever. Um, yeah. It's real motivating. <laughs> all of these things that come up in homeschooling that I never thought of at the beginning. Like the yes. fact that if someone's good at something, the other people might have an issue with it. If someone mm -hmm. else finishes, then you're you know, going to have to deal with all these emotions and feelings, like the feelings, the sheer the feelings. of feelings. <laughs> it's like There's so many feelings and we all have them. Like everyone in the family is having all the feelings. Yeah. It's, it's a thing for sure. And I didn't even realize, like I knew myself enough. Like I recognized that like I was an introvert and all of those things, but like, I didn't realize how much I got drained, you know, just from the schooling part. So now my kids know, like when school is done, mom, literally, like we eat lunch and I go to my room and shut the door. And I'm like, I at least need one hour to like be left alone <laughs> and decompress from our school day. Um, and you know, if you still have work to get done, get it done. And we will have a meeting when I come out of the room. <laughs> yeah. I've never been that great at setting that boundary. And that's a problem. Like I wish I had been more diligent about it like people just keep coming in the room you know mm -hmm. and I think like actually having a hard line is important because I would like have a moment where I would just sort of explode like you know oh, I had plenty of those before I figured it out for sure I mean and it probably took me a good two to three years to draw that line and be like no no like you don't have access to me right now i need a break because uh, yeah i mean and there was lots of this explosive like you know i've been patient i've been patient i've been patient i've been patient and then like you know exorcist right <laughs> like my head's spinning i'm spewing yeah and then i'm like having to apologize because i lost it you know for me it was easier when i taught my kids like if you are in your mind like you need to take a break too like everybody yes. else in this room doesn't have to hear you lose your mind. And like having that be a similar rule for myself was helpful. So like, yes, everybody has this rule. Like, yes, people can do things that irritate us, you know, things right. can happen, but our reactions are our responsibility. Like my reaction, exactly. yours is yours. And if you can't handle it right now, that's fine. You know, like we get to be boiling, but like you need to recognize right. and like, Exactly. Yourself from the situation until you can be like a semi respectful human being. And you know, Big Life Journal, which I know you're a big fan of too, um, they have this one printout that I got, you know, because they send those weekly emails with, I always love their printables. They're so great. Right. And it was kind of like, when you need a moment, here's what you can do. And it's like, go outside, do this, do that. And it, then around those bubbles, it like gives all the different things you can do, right? Like in those scenarios. And so I'm always like, you need to go look at that. Yeah. Go figure out what you need. Do you need to go outside for fresh air? Do you need to listen to music? Do you need a snack? Like go find what you need to do. That's such a good point. Like if you are, if you guys are not on the big life journal email list, even if you don't time, just get on their free email list because they yeah. send weekly, like really good. It is email. like the last one was on body boundaries. Yes. Or you go. And I loved that one. I was like, you know, cause kids sometimes don't have the skills to figure out the next step. Exactly. Right? seeing it right in front of them is very helpful because they want to be their best selves, right? Like we all of do. Course. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to like, you know, have a complete like meltdown <laughs> in the middle of exactly. Living. Yeah. I think that kind of stuff was really helpful. Even like, you know, in kindergarten where they have those little charts of like what the voice level should be and stuff. Yes. We, I used to use those. <laughs> Yeah. I had one. I had like a little plus sign, like a little arrow. It was for my mood. So they would right? know everything's totally cool right now. And I'm <laughs> starting to get whatever. And I would just move it. And like, they were like, oh, we did. That? Ours was for our moods too, but I had, so it was like, you know, from green all the way up to red, you know, it's a spectrum and it was in our kitchen and I had one little, uh, <laughs> clothespin for me and a clothespin for them. And every day we would like move That's them up head. and down. So we would both know like, yeah. This is where mom is. This is where you are. <laughs> my kids would start moving each other's. And I was like, maybe we don't do that. Because right. I move right. everyone up. It's important to account for more than just academics. Exactly. You know? 
Yeah. Like it really like homeschooling is no joke because you have so much more time with them, which I think is great. It's like both of us have worked and also homeschooled. Right. And with the numbers, it is a huge difference. It's not like just double or triple. It's a huge difference. And so, Massive, yeah. Yeah. And without like the support, the community support that I think have, has existed in previous generations, like for us, so many of us are momming and teaching and doing all the things alone. Yeah. I agree. It's such a huge transition for you, like not just your kids, but for yourself, especially if you worked outside the home, like going from dealing with adults all day or, you know, managing your own projects, but not really having to deal with people most of the day. It's a huge transition for yourself. And yeah, it certainly took me a lot of time to like figure all of that out. Uh, it was a major, major shift. Um, and then, like you said, not having any support around me, like no one else was homeschooling literally, <laughs> um, which made me super grateful for, you know, that IG community, because that's where I really, I mean, obviously that's where we met and I've made other connections there. And I mean, you know, now I'm like my best friends I've met literally on the internet. <laughs> We're those people. <laughs> yes, we are those people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Find your support. However you find so, it, you whatever, know you do be yourself by the way at homeschool gatherings don't waste your time trying to be like everybody else because then you'll find yourself in situations where you kind of make friends and you kind of go on a couple play dates and then you're like i can't be with these people yes if agree die. <laughs> agree i i still hang i have always been the type that again because of my introverted nature i hang on the edges of a group right because i'm like i don't want to be in the center i don't want to get to know everybody like i just need to find who whose values align with mine. Right. And unfortunately there is not a lot of secular homeschooling groups, you know, just anywhere. And because you and I both live in the South, I feel like it's even worse. Um, and so I've always just kind of hung on the outskirts and thankfully I, I have connected in real life with people who again, have the same values or at least can respect mine enough to like, not be a jerk, you know? Um, and so that has been super helpful, but that, that takes a lot of time. Like, and that's the other hard, you know, again, the hard things that people don't talk about on the internet about homeschooling is you're, it's, you're not going to instantly find your people. Like it's, you're going to meet a lot of people that you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, there are so many stories, right? I think everybody who's a veteran homeschooler has so many stories of people where you're like, did that just really happen? Like, yeah. Whoops. Or did they I really mean, just say that? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yep. Okay. Well, yeah, cool. We won't be going out with them again. <laughs> don't give up hope. I, I don't know that many people who found no one by the end of like four or five years. Agreed. Yes. At the three-year mark, I knew plenty of people who hadn't found anyone just to let everyone know. Yes, I, I agree. It took a long, long time. And again, the the most meaningful connections that I had made up until a couple of years ago were literally internet connections. Um, and I mean, and still they're my lifelines. Like, but yeah, I it, it does take a long, long time because again, you're not with people every day. It's not like, you know, going to a workplace or going to school where you're with the same people all the time for multiple hours a day. It's like you might see them at a lab or, you know, at a museum field trip or something. And then, you know, so you're only getting these little bits of who these people are. And it takes time to figure out like over the course of that year, like, okay, maybe they are somebody I could hang out with. Right. <laughs> Actually for more than an hour at a time. And also you have to count for your kids getting along. So oh, like, yes. It's like, you might love a homeschool parent that you meet whose kids just don't die with yours or aren't the right ages or there's no real right. reason to like, you know, get the kids <laughs> together. Yeah. The official part. But if you find somebody you like, that's another thing. Like, I wish I had done more of like, just talk to them anyway, because yeah. without the kids, one nice thing about homeschooling is like, you can just meet at a park or meet at a house or meet wherever. And like, exactly. Correct. Like, what would you say like over all these years has been something or things that have just been consistently working for you? 
the most consistent thing that we've stuck with and that's worked well for us are math curricula of all things. You know, Math Mammoth, which, you know, you're a fan of, has worked really, really well for my youngest. And actually teaching textbooks has worked really, really well for my um, oldest. Now she is transitioning from teaching textbooks to a different math curricula for high school. Um, um and like I said, it just worked for her, the video instruction and all of that. No. She is my visual one. Like she needs the visual. She's the auditory too, but like she needs to see it, especially with math. Like I need to see somebody do this on a board or and my kids are so polar opposite. Like, and that's the other thing I'm like, I can't even reuse curriculum for the most part because like, they just don't yeah. jive. Like there's other than maybe like history if you have kids who um have this uh, the sensory piece for noise and you have more than one kid um my kids wear like the concert headphones yeah, obviously you know. now they're old enough to go anywhere usually in the house if they want yeah. to somewhere else but when they were smaller and they kind of all had to be there that was yeah that was uh, so hard that was so yeah that's very smart helpful another like, question i had for you is just since you have kids who have actually moved from like elementary to middle to high now right like mm-hmm. how have you you know, what have you observed and how have you gone through those with your kids? Oh, wow. Yeah. So I really don't feel like the transition from elementary school to middle school was like some huge thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't this big transition for us. I mean, did the workload change a little bit? Yes. Um, You know, there's more independence and that to me was wonderful because, you know, as you know, with multiple children having to teach, it's, that's very taxing. Um, So it was great to move into the middle school years because there was a lot more independence um, on her part. And then we would just, you know, kind of have like these morning meetings or afternoon meetings. And then of course, anything she needed help with, we would set a time to sit down and like review. Now transitioning to high school has been a much bigger jump. Like just, it's just more rigorous Um, and it's more regular rigorous. I can't even say the word because we are on the path to college, right? Like that is our goal is to get into college. And so, you know, everything has kind of really ramped up and the expectations are higher and um, and it's good. Um, but we, you know, we've kind of hit crossroads already, you know, cause we start our, our school year in June and kind of ease into all of our subjects, because again, that helps me figure out like, where are our bumps? Where do we need to, you know, pull back? Where do we need to ramp up? You know, what what kind of scaffolding do I need to do? And that sort of thing. Um, And so even with like our neurodivergency, like revisiting things that we started with, right? Like medication versus non-medication, right? Do we need to add some different um, elements into scaffold to make this better transition? how are we going to focus for this long again? Um, you know? So we've kind of had to revisit a lot of things that we initially did at the very beginning of homeschool, which I thought was just, you know, interesting. Cause I thought, Oh, we're good. We're like over this hump, but now here we are kind of back at the very beginning again saying, do we need to do some of these things, you know, that we decided that we didn't need to do at the very beginning. Um, it's been, you know, challenging in that, trying to figure out what's going to work best for, you know, her and moving forward. Cause again, we're, we're very focused on going to college and we want her to be prepared for the rigor that comes with that. So it has been a bigger transition moving to high school for her than it was for middle school. And it'll be interesting to see what that transition looks like for my son, just because he is so, I don't, I'm like, he's just so different, you know? And I'm like, I don't even know it'll be a thing for him, you know? <laughs> That, that whole piece of everybody being different is, I mean, obvious on one hand, but also so shocking. When they go to school, they're all getting kind of the same experience, you know, the same right. resources, the same everything. But when we see them at home, I mean, I think instinctively you have the urge to adjust and accommodate anyway, right. not only in the like, curriculum, but also like the style, you know, like how long are we going to spend on math or you know, how, like, what is our order, like, of things even, like, are we going to do math first thing? Are we going to do, like, writing first thing? You know, like, all of those little pieces, like, do we have snacks at the same time? Do we not? Do we use it as a reward? When you shift to, like, a new rigor and a new level of responsibility, like, all of those things take on a different meaning, They break. (laughs) They all break. The systems all break. Yeah. (laughs) Every year, I feel like it's not so much the transition from, like, elementary to middle to high. 
I feel like every year your kid is like at a hugely different, like hormonal, emotional, yeah, the developmental stages. Yeah. yeah. So like, and you are too, because your other kids are at a different spot. You know, if you have right. a kid there, like preteen years at the same time that you have someone transitioning, there's a, you know, a lot of things to juggle there that you don't have to do in a classroom full of kids that are the exactly. same. I also think we hold ourselves to a really, really high standard as homeschool parents um, when managing these transitions as though right. how we're supposed to just know how to do this effectively. It's, right. And it's supposed to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and high school is different. Like you can cut it however you want, whether you want your kids to be on a college track or not, like you're going to be hard pressed to find high school curricula that aren't somewhat more rigorous. Yeah. Than college school. preparatory. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. And, you know, in high school too, I have found that I am outsourcing a lot more than we ever did in the earlier years, because again, I just don't feel comfortable with certain things. Um, and so it makes more sense for me to either fully outsource it or outsource a good chunk of it. Right. So like, for instance, with biology, she's got an online program that she does. She does, you know, the bulk of it online, but there's still like worksheet elements and labs that I'm, you know, I'm there to, to essentially oversee and grade. Yeah. <laughs> it's more than you think when you start homeschooling when they're little you know, like it really, you're really going to see it out. It exactly. really is. It like morphs into something else. And I think people should be prepared for that or really get ready to outsource. And you can outsource early too. You know, yeah. think about like why you're doing it and like what piece it gives you, you know? And I mean like peace in both ways, like what piece of that curriculum and education and all that it's giving you, but also mm -hmm. what peace of mind it's like, if you don't want to ever exactly. like explode in it, don't there's, I mean, I think in most right. places, there is a way to outsource that same thing with like yeah. labs, you know, the idea of like, um, customization in homeschool isn't just about like what curricula we pick. Right. It's also about how we like implement Execute it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. So if you have a kid who doesn't want to di dissect anything, don't dissect anything. Like unless they're right. going to be something in the sciences, like in bio, exactly. It's going to be fine. And if, if um, you have a kid who doesn't want to write out the answers to things, I think people stop curricula because they can't do it exactly. You know, they right, stop as it's written. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, just, I was very confused by this. Cause I was like, my child who has ADHD at a certain age did not want to ever write that final piece of a worksheet yep. where I write two sentences. So we just talked about it and it was fine. I could assess his understanding. I know, that is, I and was very much that way at the beginning though. And I do understand when it's, when you're new, it's yeah. like, Oh, I'm not doing it exactly how it's written. Then I must not be doing something right. Um, and which, you know, obviously we now know, like that's the furthest thing from the truth. And even now, like we started writing revolution with my youngest this year and it's, uh, it's a little bit more rigorous than he's used to. And, um, you know, so I just pick the, the sentences that he has to write, but then we do the other ones verbally out loud. And I'm like, it's the same thing. <laughs> He's still learning. Are you, I think keeping that in mind, like, what are you trying to achieve at any stage from the micro right. to the macro? Level? Like, keep that in mind because otherwise it becomes like this weird power struggle about like some random question about like the water cycle. And you're like spending 15 exactly. minutes with the child about this. So, <laughs> and meanwhile, in your head, you have to admit to yourself that like, whatever you're arguing about, you just learned that again with them that morning and you have got 100% adult life fine. You know, like you just exactly like a, you know, what is it? A water shadow or whatever. <laughs> like a rain yes. shadow. You learned that that morning. You've been exactly. fine. Exactly. We yeah. definitely forget how easily our children will adapt to like learning in life. Right. Like, because again, back to that whole, we put all this pressure on ourselves, which again is warranted, but also you know, again, if, unless it applies specifically to an area of life that they are going to be doing for the rest of their lives, like it's okay <laughs> if they forget some stuff, you know, <laughs> the times that I regret the most in my homeschooling career have been when I have like chosen and it was a choice to like make a big deal out of something that wouldn't matter in like five days, let alone five years. Like, right. I, I just could not be the loser in this situation. Like I needed yes. to make this happen. And I don't know what that was about, but I think your suggestion of taking a break at the end of the day and having the door shut would have gone a long way to like <laughs> need that so much, that piece of, um, 
superiority or whatever. Um, what would you say are your, like, what would you say are your biggest weaknesses in a homeschool day? Uh, you know, it's funny because I feel like my strength and weakness might actually be one in the same and just being aware. Like I am very much someone who needs to check everything off. Like if it's written in my agenda for the day, like we're doing all of these things, you know, um, which is great because I'm organized. And if if nothing else at the end of the day, like I'm incredibly consistent with my children. However, (laughs) that consistency also leads me to not be flexible. And I can be a real stickler for like, oh, we didn't get that one page done or whatever, you know, and it's really okay. Like I have to remind myself, like just draw an arrow. It can go to next week. It can go to tomorrow. We can do it. Like it'll get done because I am consistent, right? Like we're going to get to it. You know, I think it's really important to, if you're a forward planner, you know, and which I am that you, you, you would come from like you zoom out, right? Cause we're very zoomed in. And I will say when I switched planners to the school nest planner and she has that curriculum tracker, I was never tracking my curriculum. I don't know why, but I was like, this is brilliant because it does help me look and see like, okay, I literally, we can skip a lesson because we're halfway through this and we're not even halfway through our year. You know, I just wasn't zoomed out enough to see like, we're okay. You know? That for curriculum tracking is like, if you have like a grid, for example, or a list, it can be whatever kind of curriculum tracker you want, but you right. have all the lessons laid out or all the weeks or however you want to break it down into like manageable chunks. And then as you get through your curriculum, you like highlight, you know, where you are in it and you can have a visual of like, what's your progress at any point. You know, yeah. I did one in a bullet journal one year where basically I just, for different ones, I did it differently. So the ones that made sense to do by lesson, I just did it by number right. of lessons ones I, and I did just laid it out like a little chunk of graph paper, you know, like where mm-hmm. I just those weeks, I would number out the weeks. And it was such a relief to my soul. It was such a relief. Yes. That bar increasing. And I would let the kids <laughs> color it in so they could they yep. gauge their progress. But um yeah, you know, I think forward planning is important because I think it gives you a, a an idea of your scope and sequence for the year and how much yeah. you can cover and where your vacations lie and things like that. I think it does vaguely help. I think reverse planning is more helpful emotionally because you do see how much is happening, like how much what you're going over and you can record the fun moments and the bad moments. I actually record bad moments too, like for my own edification, like Mm -hmm. mine and theirs and, and everything. And it makes it a really honest reflection of, yeah. but it also helps me see yeah. our pain point, you know, like what yeah. days, a bunch of things going on and this day was, you know, great or not great or whatever. And you know. yeah, and I don't know if I would consider, I guess you can call it reverse planning, but I have started journaling in the, like, I actually have a whole column that is just notes and it's whether it says like, we didn't get to this or whatever, or like we really struggled with this today. I have really enjoyed having that in there. And then even at the end of the month, I go back and reflect of like, again, kind of zooming out and saying, okay, overall, like what was good and what was really hard for everybody. Um, and I've been journaling that in my, um, planner and it, it does, it does help because I can either see that like, okay, this curriculum was really hard at first, but now we've got into our groove or whatever, and we're good. Or like, this is still a pain point six months in. Why are we still doing this? <laughs> yeah. And I think it gives you a more honest appraisal because if you get to a pain point and it's like you're six months into a curriculum, but you haven't recorded any of this stuff. Like, I think it's hard to reflect is. what is happening. Like what has happened all the way throughout, you know, right. We're always making up stories right in our head to explain our lives. Yes, we are. And I think that's true of homeschool too. Like we're always like, well, you know, this is because blah, 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 blah. But if you have a real record of yeah. like, oh, this was a problem January, February, March, April. Right. Or even like, you know, especially in the early years of like figuring out like, maybe we actually have an issue with dyslexia. Like you're not going to know that unless you're being truthful and honest. And I think that is a really hard part about being a parent slash teacher is, you know, having to face those struggles and be like, my kid might actually have a learning disability. Um, and that is tough to grapple with. Like we've all been there, but it is, it's so important because the only way you're going to help your child is not by reading aloud to them. Like you actually need to get them help, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
at some point, I think one of the dangers of homeschooling is that lack of assessment. Yeah. You know, because if we're all like so ourselves, we're not getting tests, numbers don't matter, blah, 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 which I think, you know, whatever. I yes. don't give that many tests in my homeschool, but I think assessing like an actual assessment, like mm-hmm. time reading, um, spelling word assessments, like something that matters, like where you can literally look at a kid and be like, okay, like you didn't learn any of this, like, or you're not at this place where you can progress past CVC words or really knowing that and knowing when you started and how many months it's been is so important. You know, if, yeah. even if you do like a very loosey goosey kind of like casual history curriculum or something, there has right. to be some way, even if it's just narration or something of like seeing whether anything is sticking, sticking right? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. because otherwise, yeah. what are we, you know, exactly. Yeah. An oral, nar- oral narration is valid. Like if you can have them orally narrowly narrate to you, great. Like, Your kids are basically, it's just like you learning something and then having to teach it. Right. Like you actually know that you've learned it because now you're teaching it to somebody. Last thing I would say is like, what keeps you going in it? I will say what keeps me in it is, well, one, I just really love it. Like truly it is nothing that I ever dreamt of. Like this was who I was going to be in my life, but I absolutely love it. So like the hard days are so worth it for me um, because the connection right with my kids, I just feel like I wouldn't have the connection that I have, especially you know, when your kids get older, you know, there is still that natural tendency to kind of pull away into their own independence. But I feel like the relationship that I have, especially with my, my oldest is so tight. And like, I mean, of course I'm her mother first, but like, I feel like we have a real friendship that's developing too. And that's like, I just don't know that it would have happened and that she would tell me all the things that she tells me, like she's, she confides in me and I'm like, okay, this is, this is a good thing, you know? And, and I'm, I love that we, we have an open and honest relationship enough that she feels comfortable to come to me literally about anything. Um, and I hope that that continues, you know, um, through, you know, her high school career. And I think it will just because of the nature of homeschool. Um, so that has been probably my favorite thing about it is like, I'm like, I actually am really close to my kids. And like, when I was working outside the home, like, you know, we only saw each other in the evenings and on the weekends and holidays. So I just, I really do enjoy them as people. Yes. I need a break. And you know, that's just human nature, right? You're spending so much time with someone like you, it's not normal. <laughs> like you, you're going to need to take a break from them yes. and just um, seeing them develop into the humans that they're going to become is really, really cool. And like, you know, encouraging them to, you know, think for themselves, right. That's really fun to see like who they're becoming, you know, and like this, the philosophical questions that they sometimes ask, I'm just like God, are blowing my mind right now. And like, we're gonna have to come back to this. Cause I don't know. <laughs> but since my kids are all in school this year, um, I, that's the piece I worry about the most. Yeah. Because I truly, for all my complaining, like I've loved homeschooling as well. Yeah. And the girls, especially sort of, it was a sudden kind of decision, like all my homeschooling stuff for them for the following year is still on the table, just in case. Um, I, that's the piece that I worry about the most. Like if this is truly the end of our homeschool career, then like, will that change? Because right. my, I would say that's been my favorite thing about homeschooling too, is just no matter how you slice it. And I think I know wonderful moms who sent their kids to school, you know, of the course. Inter- like who have great relationships with their kids. Yes. I'm peace is something yeah. you cannot argue with, you know, yeah. like it's just, that's so much more time. So for good and for bad, but I mean, exactly. You know, we shall see how that all shakes out, but it makes me sad. <laughs> Understandably, I would be so, I mean, and honestly, I feel like Tanya, you've, <laughs> you've been so brave. Like, I just don't like, I would of course support my kids if they were both. And I ask them every year, like, Hey, is this something you want to do? Um, and they're like, no, <laughs> okay, that's fine. But know that I support it. But also I would, I would struggle. I would have a really, really hard time. And I think it's incredibly brave to let yourself and your kids explore that option. Like, and obviously like, again, homeschooling will always be there you know, too. And it, and it comes back to the pros and cons of both types, right? Like there are so many wonderful things about homeschool, but there, we can say the same about schooling. Like, I think that's one thing that 
drives me crazy in the homeschool community is like the demonization of the school system. And I'm like, yes, it has its problems, but so does homeschool. (laughs) I mean, and there's great teachers and yes, there are wonderful human beings within the education system. And I mean, I'm a product of the education system, so I'm not going to demonize it because I still, you know, at almost 42, like can think of back to all of my favorite teachers, right? Miss Bruce in the second grade and her love for the earth. (laughs) And like my, I think, I don't remember what grade it was high school English teacher who was my absolute favorite human on the planet and still is like, I just, I'm like, she's the best. And my eighth grade algebra teacher, when I was struggling with math, he was like the most encouraging person and like made me feel valued and, you know, seen. And those are things that, you know, you know, are invaluable, obviously, and just amazing experiences that I had. And, and again, to, to all the things that we could say about, you know, the public school system, there are still really wonderful people trying to do amazing things for the betterment of all of our children, not just themselves, you know, Um, and we don't give enough credit. Um, I just, this stuff really drives me crazy when people demonize the school system, like, again, I've read all the John Holt books and I, you know, and I, and I agree with some of his points, but like, also it is not, it's not a universal truth. Yeah, exactly. There are still really great people doing really wonderful things in everyday classrooms. Exactly. For absolutely nothing. (laughs) But there are some people who are just supposed to be teachers and yes. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, my English teacher, I think I randomly wrote her the other day and she like wrote back, I was her favorite student. And I was like, this is the best thing that's happened to me since COVID. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like, I'm printing it out and putting it in my, my journal because this oh, is man. amazing. I know I had a, <laughs> a professor in college that wrote like my letter of recommendation when I graduated. And like, it was the nicest thing that anybody had ever said about me up until that point. And I still like read it. <laughs> it brings tears to my eyes. Oh, for sure. Someone once saw you, you know? Exactly. Yes. So. Yes. It is very good to be seen. I think that is, that is the most special thing about school in general, whether you're homeschooling and you get to see those, or there's a teacher who gets to see it and witness it. Like it's still, it's so important. (laughs) So to end it out, I would say on that note, which, you know, Amy and I have talked about this concept a lot with our other good friend, this idea of being seen, the more you can do to make your kids feel seen in your homeschool, in every way, like in that little moment when they like need a pencil versus a pen or like they want this eraser versus that eraser, um, all the way up to the big stuff, you know, like what do they need that day in that moment? Like, do they need to really just take a break for themselves or do they, right. need to, do they need someone to push them? Like, you know, like to really see them and like their potential and where they are at, I think is the biggest gift we can give them. Truly, so, truly. And yes. don't forget to see yourself too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that door, as Amy says, like take that hour. Right. That's I right. Take that, that hour. Earlier. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for doing this with me. It was so much fun. Thanks. To talk, as always. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for asking. <laughs> if you guys like the series and you want to hear more from veteran homeschoolers and you have specific questions that we didn't address here, or a specific veteran homeschooler that you follow that you'd like me to like reach out to so we can do an interview, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I really do appreciate it. And I wish you guys the very best day. Bye.